Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's University Business Web Seminar today, uh, which is entitled How Virtual Queuing Transforms Student Services at South Piedmont Community College, which is brought to you by the generous support of our sponsor, QLess. Now, before we get started, I'd just like to share just a few housekeeping items with you and we'll get right on our way. If at any time uh, you'll need any technical support, uh, you can just use the chat panel, which you can find it's located on the right side of your screen. Uh, then you just have to select on my name, which is Stephen Blackburn, and then I'll just type uh, and then just type in your message and I'll get back to you as quickly as I can. Uh, I'm also about to submit a phone number and access code in the chat that you can dial in if you want to listen privately uh, or if you don't have any speakers. So look out for that as well. Um, we will also be welcoming any questions that you have today uh, with a Q&A session that will be happening at the end of the presentation. Uh, you can submit all the questions that you have for us today by using the Q&A panel, uh, which you can find it's on the uh, bottom right side of your screen uh, next to the chat panel, and then just send your questions to all panelists. Uh, if you don't see either the chat or the Q&A panels, uh, again, look to the bottom right hand side of your screen and then just click on the expand triangle. Uh, which is directly in front of the panel name. Also, the last thing I'd like to point out um, is that if you would like to access the web seminar at a later time, uh, you'll be pleased to know that everyone who is registered here and who is attending here today, uh, you will all receive an email with a link to the slides as well as an archive recording. And now it is my pleasure uh, to, to introduce our speakers here today. Uh, first, we have Dr. Melinda Daniel, who is the uh, Executive Director of Learning of Innovations over at South Piedmont Community College, and Kelly Kleiner, who is QLS's Director of Sales. Hello, Dr. Daniel and Kelly. Nice to have you with us today. Hello. Thank you, Stephen. It's nice to be here. I appreciate it. So again, the title of the session today is How Virtual Queuing Transformed South Piedmont Community College. I'll introduce myself again. I'm Kelly Kleiner, I'm the VP of Sales here at QLIS, have been for the last eight years, but very honored to introduce you to Dr. Melinda Daniel, who's been kind enough to join us and share her experience with QLIS. I'm gonna cover just a quick agenda um, and then we'll get started. So first we're gonna go over South Piedmont's challenges before QLess. We'll look at their research, research project, excuse me, implementation of virtual queuing and what that looked like for them, results and what they've seen happen since QLess has been implemented at campus, QLess in action at SPCC. And now it's my honor to turn it over to Dr. Melinda Daniel. Thank you so much, Kelly, and good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us. I'm excited to tell you a little bit about the process that we've gone through um, to find QLIS and to utilize QLIS to truly help transform what I actually refer to as customer service, quite frankly, here at South Piedmont Community College. Um, and right before we get started, I would like to note that this was on our radar. Um, before the pandemic, but everything kind of got pushed like it did for the rest of the world online and thus into hyperdrive. So um, just to kind of keep that in mind that that we're talking about, it's amazing the um, sense of urgency that can then come with a pandemic. So Kelly, if we could, let's go on to that next slide, please. You got it. Wonderful. So here at South Piedmont Community College, what we've really found is that we had a couple of issues we were trying to work through. The first one was really about our students and what we found through those of you that are in the community college sector um, through the SESI and various results that came from that is that we had students that were frustrated in their access in their access to our resources on campus. And what I mean by that is they had a hard time locating the resources, knowing what to hunt for, and then getting an appointment to, to do there because I know that this one's gonna be completely unique to South Piedmont Community College we're understaffed, <laughs> which brings us to the next bullet point, the next challenge that we were facing, which was a real sense of staff inefficiency, meaning that um, we actually have numerous locations and different campuses, different buildings, and some of our campuses and locations are much busier than others. And we found that we couldn't 
staff both locations to always predict and then respond to the needs that we had. So our students were having a hard time necessarily accessing what they needed and our staff were having a hard time keeping up based on um, location. But you know, inevitably, if you if you close one office and send everybody to the other one, then someone shows up at, at the previous location, right? Or you just have these off days where it's slow and then the other one's busy. I mean, predicting that is uh, tumultuous at best. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that we did not have stellar data on what was happening. We have, and I'm sure I'm not the only one, right? I keep saying that because I've, the point that I'd like to drive home with that is that the experiences that we have from my understanding and from the research that is out there is not unique to us. Every campus and every college has their own spin and has their own location and has their own culture and climate and all of those things, but we all in higher ed face similar problems. And one of those things is a lack of data. What we found is that we had lots of feelings about <laughs> appointments or we had antiquated paper sign-in sheets, right? And so someone was gonna have to go through those sign-in sheets to then tabulate the number of students that we were seeing on a regular basis. That doesn't add to our staff efficiency. That's not a good use of time. Um, and, or what if we forgot to sign people in and, and how long did you meet with them? Well, I, I, I think it was like 12 minutes, or I think this takes about 30 minutes, or I, I think, or, and, it, and it's even more unfortunate when we use words like, I feel, <laughs> I feel like we don't have enough staff. I feel like we don't have these things. Um, and these were some of the faces, again, not unique to South Piedmont, but things that we were beginning to articulate and to discuss and to work on solutions for. Um, and then hits the pandemic, right? And so then all of these things are then further compounded by ensuring student safety, right? And not wanting to have large lines outside for registration and not wanting to have lots of people gathering inside the advising center or not wanting, and then on general, you know, on general good days, even right now, if we are in it, we're returning to normal or whatever the case may be, um, we still live in times where it's important to keep students safe and um, it's important that maybe we don't need unnecessary long lines on college campuses, right? And what we what we were thinking about is if we could just figure out a way to to decrease the ebb and flow and just to streamline, right? Wouldn't that be amazing? And so we had these thoughts and had these ideas and that's really what we were shooting for. And then that leads us to the next slide, which is we started looking for solutions. We started to find things and I'll tell y'all when this started. So it's a Saturday morning. I have two little boys and I, oh, I got brought into the college to help solve this problem, right? They're like, not a big deal. Here's the issues. Here's the, you know, the problems we laid out fix it. Okay, no big deal. So it's a Saturday morning and my two little boys and my husband all need a haircut. So I pull out my phone. I go to my app for Great Clips and I fill it out. And it's like, okay, you know, I've signed in for three people. We'll see you in 27 minutes. Yeah, that's what we need. We need to get people in line. We need to get people in a queue, right? We need to tell them you can come and see this. So I'm like, cool. I want that. That's exactly what I want. And I have no idea what this is called. I just know it's the Great Clips app, right? For this, this haircutting place. So I contact the chief technology officer because I'm shameless and I just start asking questions and I contact them and I say, hey, I would love your app, right? Like we're a nonprofit, we're a state education board. Like what are the chances y'all want a tax write-off? And the answer is zero. <laughs> There's zero chance that they want the tax write off. They are totally content to not give me any of this information and to rather um, tell me, you know, that they think that's great. And they were very kind, very kind and um, almost humorous, but we're not interested in sharing their proprietary app. Fair enough. But what I did find was the app builder. So I contacted the people that built the app. And the owner of that company was incredibly gracious and incredibly kind and spent far more time with me than he probably should have explaining to me the way that this works. And then explained to me the price tag for a custom app, <clears throat> which was incredibly painful. And as a, as a institution of higher education, I'm gonna go ahead and say we can't afford that, which is not surprising given some of the other things that he said that this company was working on. And again, incredibly kind, incredibly gracious. And I'm, very grateful because one of the things that he did suggest, 
he said, I, you know, and I don't even actually think that you want to create this from scratch because we were looking at like this really intense, you know, API driven integration. He's like, I don't know if that's what you want. He was like, but I think you had to contact Qlis. I was like, okay, what's a, what's a Qlis? And he was like, well, and he explained the situation. I was like, oh, perfect. So then I contacted Qlis and I scheduled a demo. Um, and once I realized what this was, which was the answer to some of those questions that we were looking for, um, I scheduled a demo with a team. So the team here at the college was made up of all the initial stakeholders. So I was thinking about all the people, I like to think about the front line of defense for the college. And that front line of defense is what I refer to as homeostasis, right? So I was thinking like, what, what, you know, what areas do people need to see that on the front end, they would have no idea, nor pragmatically would they actually care who they met with, right? So I was thinking about admissions. They don't care whether or not they meet with Ashley or whether they meet with Chris or whether they meet with Amanda or they don't care, right? Because they just need to meet with admissions. Financial aid, same idea, right? Now, later on, they probably care if they meet with a certain person with Canva, you know, with counseling or a certain per person for advising. And later on, they can set that up and then they can select a resource through Qlist and they can do that. But on the front end, they don't care. So I was thinking about who do we need to have? And I got everybody together and ultimately we agreed that Qlis was the right um, choice for us, the right technological solution, because we were looking for a system that was easy for our students and staff to access. And what I mean by ease of access, right, because this was one of the things, is that we needed to make sure that it was a solution that we could use for perspective as well as current students, which means I don't need students having to go through authentication to be able to schedule an appointment. That was a really big deal for us. We also wanted to make sure that the appointment afforded us the opportunity to either schedule in-person or virtual solutions. And that was really gonna help us with our staff efficiency. Cause one of the things we wanted to say is that if a, if a student wanted to be seen right away and there was a wait, right? To be seen on a certain campus, could they go ahead and then select to be seen immediately virtually? And the answer here was yes. And so again, that ability to book in-person appointments across various locations, whether it's virtually or um, in person was very important for us. And then we wanted something that was going to have stick, something that was going to last with us beyond the pandemic. Because, like I said, this was on our radar beforehand. And then we just got, we had to move into hyperdrive and had to move quicker once the pandemic hit. We also wanted something that could integrate with our um, current calendar software that we use, which is that we are an Office 365 campus. So that was important for us that our solution could. Um, could work with that so that our staff could set up, you know, <laughs> doctor's appointments and that the system would know that actually this person's not available, right? Or if they had another appointment, right? The students could have an accurate idea of wait times. Um, and then we needed the data. We needed the data so that we could start having serious data-driven conversations. And this was an important point and one that we'll come back to here shortly, but the data was a non-negotiable a non situation for us. So when we were looking at those integrations, like I mentioned before, it was important to us that this integrate with Office 365. And Office 365 provided us the opportunity then to know what, what availability our staff would have. As we look at increasing efficiency, if someone is blocked off for an appointment, we found that our students don't mind waiting. It's not about the wait, it's about the expectation that we sit on the front end. And that integration allows us to align student expectations with the reality of the times in which they'll be served. I have time, you know, I wanna be seen, I've got 28 minutes. That gives me time to return my laptop to the laptop kiosk. It gives me time to go and get a snack from the cafe. It gives me time to finish my homework. It gives me time to change out my laundry if I'm a student that's at home and I'm being seen virtually. It gives me time to go and pick up my kid from school and I'm not sitting and waiting for financial aid. I mean, we use this, right? At all, even companies like cell phone providers or the cable company with like the worst, the airlines with the worst customer service, they're utilizing this. Something that's so student and face-to-face -face and person-driven, why would we not want to afford that? So that was a very important part for us. Can you tell I feel passionately about this? I'm going on and on, but nonetheless, that was super important for us and something I wanted to make sure that we mentioned today. The next thing is that it was very important for us that this would work with our app. So we have launched what we call SPCC Navigate, and Navigate is our mobile app. 
and we'll show some video here in a minute, but it was important for us that our students literally have access, because again, remember I said that it was designed to mimic homeostasis and to give all those baselines of connection to the college and in the palm of their hands, right? It was super important that all of that exists within the app. So the fact that Qlis is URL based for us and that it's not, we didn't have to do any deep embedding there weren't huge integrations that had to take place. There was deliberate planning and programming that had to be done on an individual level to make sure that the requirements for the appointments, et cetera, was done. But this wasn't anything that had to be, wasn't a heavy lift on our IT team is the point there. That was really nice because then it, we worked into the app easy. And then what we did is we partnered this also with Compass, which is our wayfinding solution. This means that students who were interested, potential students or new students to the college could make their appointments and then also find their ways to get there. And that was important for us that these things be able to all work together. Next slide, please. Wonderful. So here's a screenshot of our app, SPCC Navigate. And so um, what we've got here, as you can see, we've got the Qlist logo. We didn't try to come up with anything. Um, different for the name for this, right? This is Qless. Um, it's the idea that you can go ahead and get into Q. And I'll tell you, it living in our app is fantastic. In the top right hand corner here, you can see um, our little chatbot. Our chatbot's name is Navi. And Navi actually points students to Qless on a regular basis. So if Navi gets stumped, if our AI driven chatbot can't answer questions, it will actually then go ahead and suggest that the students make an appointment driving on that active, right? If there's anything I know about adult student learners um, and uh, adults in general, is that we want it now, right? And the new, um, the new generations seem to also want things now, right? In the palm of their hands and right now. And so if they can go ahead and make the appointment, we wanna capitalize on that. We may not have anybody that's available to see you right now, but, or we may have somebody that can see you now virtually, right? Or we may have somebody that can see you in 18 minutes, or if it's a Sunday, we may have somebody that can see you tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. We can go ahead and get that scheduled. And we love that Qlist works with that, right? That we can go ahead and set up those expectations almost months in advance, right? Depending on how we want to have that set up. But having the accessibility and having the ability, the, our students to be able to access it, our current students to know how to use it, our potential students to know how they can then learn. It's amazing. The other thing that it's driven us to do is actually to put kiosks around campus so that outside of student services on all of our campuses and in our main lobbies, you actually, we have little kiosks set up with a tablet that is pulled up to Qlist. And so they can go ahead and make appointments there. And that's been amazing, which then, yes, drives us to implementation. Thank you. So how did we do this? Well. I'll be honest with you, we made a really quick decision. We had been looking at these. It was a slow process to get there. We did lots of fielding, but what we had to do is when we started looking at these solutions, I got all the people, like I said, together in these meetings to watch the demos that were the stakeholders, because here's what I was not interested in doing. I'm basically a project manager, and I don't want to set this up. I don't want to do all of this. I can't be running this day to day. I don't know whether an appointment for financial aid for a FAFSA review or for an emancipation paperwork should take seven minutes or 42. I don't even have, I have no thoughts or feelings on that, but financial aid does. I don't know how long a name change appointment takes with the registrar. I have no idea how long they need to fill out the application or to do a residency status check or advise for a nursing program, I don't know, but the stakeholders do. And so I brought them in to let them make those decisions. And what I love about Qlist, one of the things, and the reason we were able to make a super quick decision on this was because I had buy-in from the various departments and because they could govern themselves. As an institution of higher education, we do not move quickly. That is not really well. South Piedmont, we actually have a tendency to move very, very quickly, but historically our field does not move quickly. Um, and a lot of that's because of process and procedure. I wasn't really interested in SharePoint forms. I wasn't really interested in going through those things. I wanted people to go in, control their own calendars, control their appointment types, and be able to run things and how it was gonna be most effective for them. And when we realized that Qlist checked off all of these boxes, at that point, it was a very quick decision. We knew what we were looking for, so we went to go turn it on. 
Now, again, part of this and the reason we were able to move quickly was because I gave everybody their own areas to create. I said, counseling, what appointments do you need and how long do you need them and who should be taking them? We created that. I said, advising, what appointments should you have? How long should they take and who should be taking them? They created that. We said, should this be the same virtual and in person? Yes. Do we have all of these things on all of the campuses? Yes or no. What is unique to this campus? What is unique to this campus? And people just built it out. And once we figured it out, because every every new iteration, every new integration that we use on college campuses, it all has its own jargon and you have to figure that part out and kind of play with it. That's what the Qless team is for. And I can tell you that I love knowing that I can contact Stacy or I can contact Tara and I can get answers. Right, I think Tara was technically our sales rep and we just haven't let her go. Um, she's still very engaged with us and we still answer, she still answers my emails and we're still meeting almost once a month to talk about you know, the implementation because one of the things that we really shoot for is to take advantage, because I don't wanna use the word exploit, um, but take advantage of all of our technological partners to the greatest ability that we can. Right, and that's part of being a good steward of our resources here at the college is making sure that if there are integrations, if there's different ways to use it. So we did go with a campus wide deployment uh, where everybody's using this and we're looking actually at even setting up this with our HR department for internal usage as well. So it's a, it's a so if we have people, you know, from various insurance companies or whatever coming that HR could then set it up to where us as employees, we could make appointments right to see these people and make it that's that's again increasing staff efficiency so we're not all just lined up to get dental right or whatever the case may be so communication was a huge part of this um how do we get it out there it's one thing to launch a new product it's absolutely another thing to convince people to use it and to let them know that we're here and that the resources are here we actually had this beautiful silver lining opportunity and we took full advantage of it, um, which was in the fall of 2021 when everybody came back to campus, right? People were starting to, well, starting, not everybody, but people were starting to come back to campus. We actually had a new building that was open during the pandemic that nobody had seen before. Um, our students were still wary. They weren't sure, right? Like our, our schools here, um, not just our school, but um, the public schools here were in and out, which impacts a lot of our student learn or adult student learners. And so time, People were even more cautious and um, careful with their time commitments. So we had to do a big launch to let them know what we had and encourage them to use it. And quite frankly, to celebrate and let them know the steps that were taken to help ensure their success, their access and their safety while they were gone. And that led us to actually doing a whole um, launch campaign, a marketing campaign here at the college. And so I think actually our next slide is gonna share the video that we created that we shared with everybody. And Kelly, we can't hear it. You just have, you just have to unmute yourself. Let me do let me do that for you, Kelly. Okay. Stop shop to find Sorry, guys, I'm going to skip back if that's okay. I didn't realize. At South Piedmont Community College, we understand that digging for the information you need to succeed feels exhausting. And with this many resources to look to, you can get lost. That's why we created SPCC Navigate, our new mobile app that holds everything you need to succeed in one place. Navigate is your one-stop shop to find, well, everything South Piedmont. Just open the app and right from your customizable dashboard, you have easy access to everything you need to stay connected at SPCC. You can also tap into the app's main page to see all the resources available to you, including those that you don't want to keep in your main dashboard. With everything right at your fingertips, you can do things like check your SPCC email, tap right into Moodle so you can check on classwork and assignments. You can also access your student portal right here. Want to skip the lines for financial aid or picking up your student ID? Simply navigate to QLess and schedule an appointment. Need help finding your way around? Simply navigate to Compass and you can get directions direct to the door of where you need to go. 
Got a burning question that needs an answer? Simply navigate to Navi for 24-7 access to a chat channel that can help in English or Spanish. And don't forget to head over to the student feed to see what all the buzz is around South Piedmont. Would you look at that? Someone else is a big fan of Navigate. SPCC Navigate, your destination for success at South Piedmont. Thank you, Kelly. We were absolutely yes. thrilled. And <laughs> of course, we we put that everywhere. So that was on our Facebook feed. It was on our Twitter feed. It was playing on the, the slides around campus or all of our um, display TVs around the campus. And we were we just had our fingers crossed, right, that we could do this big launch. We engaged the faculty, we engaged our staff, we engaged our student government association and did a huge push right, for this concept of Navigate. We've, like I said, we put the kiosks around campus to help students be able to access that so that, again, right, we, we talk about equity all the time in higher ed and how do we ensure equitable access? And the answer is, is through our homepage, right, so that Navi can help book those appointments, our chatbot, through the app, but then also through the kiosks around campus so that even if you don't have a smartphone, that you can still have access to this. So this doesn't preclude students from taking walk-ins or um, I'm sorry, student services or other areas on campus from taking walk-ins and it doesn't prevent students from being seen on various campuses, right? It just eases the access by which they understand the time commitment associated with waiting. And then the fact that it, I don't know, yeah, I'm, Kelly, I know that you're gonna get into this, so I don't, I don't wanna take that time, but oh my goodness, the ability for it to text our students. The bottom line is our students are on their phones and we had to find a way to help them make appointments on their phones. And I don't think anybody was real interested in their entire class. I also teach adjunct. I wasn't really interested in my entire class having access <laughs> to know that I have a dentist appointment on Monday at one, or you know, not everybody needs to know all of that information that I keep on my calendar, but they could go ahead and make an appointment then through QList, right? And they just know what my availability is. And I think that's awesome. And now let's look at some of the results because that data was very important to us. So since May of 2021, we've actually had over 10,788 appointments scheduled through QList. That's mind boggling to me. Um, that's less, well, we're coming up on a year. 10,788 appointments scheduled. And in the fall semester, we had less than half of our students on campus, right? And this is including a new software. And let's all be honest, not much happens during June and July on college campuses, and the month of December is kind of a wash. <laughs> it's outstanding. And we're averaging over a thousand appointments a month now. We've been watching it grow. I'll tell you, it's become a bit of a competition here at the college. Um, every month we report the numbers to our executive vice president, um, and it goes up to the president's office. And it's it's been a lot of fun to watch this competition happen because um, our advising center has scheduled over 5,000 of these appointments. That's our advising center. And they are, for lack of a better phrase, they are just hell bent on making sure that no one ever beats their record, that nobody touches their record. They are using this and they've used this data in multiple ways. They now have a very solid understanding of the average of time that it takes for a student to be seen for all of their different appointment types. They have an understanding of which campuses are busier on which days, and they've actually been able to correlate that with the classes that are on campus, right? So realizing that if they spread out the general education courses, it may also result in spreading out and kind of stabilizing the flow in which they see students rather than this ebb and flow, right? So you can see that when Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, when that 9 to 9.50 a.m. class gets out, right they see this giant spike because they have a whole lot of students on campus at that time they know that that's when they need to bring in additional staffing etc right they've been able to now see these trends it's not thoughts it's not feelings it's data and it's outstanding and the fact that now there's competition right and we have some areas that are like we need more people and we're like the, the numbers aren't suggesting that whereas advising's like we need more people everyone's like the numbers they confirm this right like i'm not this isn't hyperbole. We have 1,200 appointments a month. We have what? I mean, it's it is unbelievable what is happening in um, in the departments, but having access to this information now. And then one of the things that I'm super excited about is how many appointments Navi has scheduled 
So like I said, Navi is our 24 seven interactive bilingual chatbot. Um, and what it does is it actually, once it gets to the point where it can no longer answer a question, it suggests that the students go ahead and book that appointment, or if they're talking to them on the weekends and there's nobody available, go ahead and get in line, get in queue, and let's get you an appointment scheduled. And so it's really cool to see that that has been the number one click is for our busiest campus um, for the seventh month in a row. And for the past two months, it's like the third or the fourth click is for our virtual campus. So we're actually being able to trend that as well and watch and see, okay, if Navi's feeding these appointments and then we can see these appointment numbers rising, do we need to increase virtual staffing? Right? Would it make sense then? Lots of people are looking for virtual appointments right now, not virtual appointments in terms of scheduling an appointment for virtually, but virtual or work from home positions, right? Um, employment opportunities. We are discussing whether or not it would make sense to start filling positions as remote to fill some of these places when we have so many students seeking specifically virtual accommodation, right? And I don't know that that's something we would have ever considered before. It's not to say that we're going to do it, but it's saying that we, these are driving conversations. Data is designed to drive conversations. Innovation is designed to drive conversation. Um, and the conversation should then, <laughs> quite frankly, drive additional innovations. It's a vicious circle, vicious circle. But we're thrilled with the numbers is where they're showing up. Our students are expressing incredible satisfaction. We're looking forward to seeing additional SESI data. Um, and it just, it has been a fundamental transformation for the faculty and staff in terms of their efficiency and also accountability, right? Now we say, if it's not in the system, did it happen? Right, What what is it looking for? And it's a sense of accountability to our students and to ourselves and to our departments. And then with regards to our students, it is easing their access to all of the areas on campus. And the way that they can access it from all of the different vantage points to schedule these appointments has been absolutely transformational. Uh, we're thrilled with the product that we just that we decided on. We're glad to have the partners in QList. And I think even bigger than that, as a as an anecdote, and then I'll turn it over to Kelly for the demo. We took this information with us to recently to the um, to a national conference and. One of the things that I thought was so cool and that the committee that was that was uh, reviewing at the conference agreed was that QLIS even worked with us to have a sample appointment set up so that participants at this conference and at this competition could see QLIS in action. Right. One of the things that we fervently believe here at South Piedmont Community College is we want to be leaders and we want to be innovators, but none of this is because we're it's not because we're brilliant or we're fantastic we are brilliant and we are fantastic but that's not why we're able to do these things it's because kind and generous people have come before us and have laid the groundwork and so the creator the developer um at um bionic apps was kind enough to share with me QLIS, right and tara has been kind enough to continue to work with us to make it the solution that we need and thus we want to share with others that we have found the solution that works for us and we were able to integrate it into other solutions that other community colleges have also shared and now we have our i don't know basket full of it was recently easter we have a basket full of all of our pieces that work really well for us and that has been an incredible opportunity and something we are grateful for. So having said that, uh, we're also help, happy, our different departments are happy to answer any questions that you may have, but without further ado, I will um, turn it over to Kelly. Thank you so much, Dr. Daniel. That was excellent to hear the story. It's certainly a successful one, it's exciting. One of so many stories that we hear, but I really appreciate your enthusiasm and the desire to share that with the um, attendees today. So I'm going to take it here and give us a closer look at QList so you guys have a better understanding what the solution really includes. So let's talk about virtual queuing. So really, the solution was designed many years ago to get rid of physical lines. So it was a really very basic mission is we know that nobody likes to wait, particularly students, particularly today's students. They're very used to instant gratification. Um, nobody likes to stand in a line or sit in a lobby. And so it's virtual lines. They're tethered with their phone instead of having to be physically present. 
so they're not required to be there in person. Okay, so that's what we're talking about. Um, it's two-way communication with QList. And if you look at this image on your screen here, it'll give you an idea of what some of the text messages can potentially look like. Um, but the two-way is a really important piece of what QList does. So not only are we sending out messages like you're seeing here on this cell phone image, but students also have the opportunity to reply back. That's a really key feature. And so what that means is they can tell your staff things about their intent to show up. So if they want to leave a queue, they can do that by using a command on their phone. They could cancel an appointment from their mobile device, or they could even say, I'm running behind. Oftentimes at community college, there's a parking issue. Um, they may be trying to park their car and they know they're not going to make it inside in the next few minutes. Instead of losing their spot, they can push themselves back and allow another student to take their spot. So two-way communication is really important to also remember. It's easy to check in. And so I think, you know, Dr. Daniel mentioned some of those things. So we have a variety of ways for students to be able to access student services. So uh, remote join is one of the biggest things that we talk about, but let me just kind of go over what those are. So access points for students, of course, the app, like you just saw um, on the Navigate app, it's pretty awesome. So certainly to go through an app or QList has our own app. So I would encourage anybody that's joined today to download QList on your phone so you can see other colleges and universities and how they've customized the app. So the app entry is certainly one access point. Um, the second is through the college website. That's just another remote join option. We also have what's called the text to join interface. And so the way the text to join works is the whole experience is all through the student's phone. They, we will assign a number to a college. The college gets to choose a short code. It's usually something very customizable like SPCC. Students will send the short code to that number and get a response. It starts to give them options. Tell us where you want to go, what you need, right? And then, of course, we have in-person opportunity, which is a lobby kiosk. Um, and just so everybody listening understands that when I talk about a lobby kiosk, it's non-proprietary hardware which most colleges tend to appreciate. So you're not getting into purchasing equipment through QLIS. Um, most of our college partners use tablets of some sort. Also, in addition to a lobby kiosk, also um, thanks to COVID, um, a lot of colleges started to use QR codes, which have been hugely successful. And I think they'll be around for some time to come. So a lot of colleges are putting QR codes in their lobbies, doorways, entrances, maybe even on your website. So all of those ways students can access to check in um, for the services that they need. Providing updates. So again, if I draw your attention to the image on the screen, we continue to send real-time updates. So their first message that they're going to get if they're joining a queue is a customized forecasted wait time that is created by our AI. So I can talk a little bit more about the learning algorithms, but that's the first thing. But they'll continue to get real-time updates telling them how their place in line is changing, how they're moving up, and that their time is approaching. So that's a really important thing as well. So that's a little bit about the virtual queuing piece here at QList. In addition to that, and this is something that Dr. Daniel covered quite a bit, is we're also an appointment scheduling tool. So that's kind of on top of the virtual queuing piece that's really our core is you know, managing your walk-in experience, giving them wait time. So again, they can roam freely and use their time the way that they want, whether that's in class, at home, doing the laundry, uh, getting something to eat. There's a, a variety of things that we can all do with our extra time. But we also can be an appointment tool, which oftentimes you'll find in advising. But any department could choose to say, yeah, let's, let's have them, you know, give them the ability to schedule appointments as well, where then they're choosing the day and time that they would like to be seen. Um, this also helps your staff be prepared. They have a better idea of what to expect throughout the day if students are scheduling those appointments. And I think that Dr. Daniel alluded to this as well. Your staff can, or you guys can decide as a team if you want students booking appointments with just the first available person in an office, like maybe financial aid or admissions, that's not so important. They're not necessarily concerned with who they see, they just wanna see someone. But we all know that in advising and counseling, that's oftentimes pretty different. They're assigned an advisor or a counselor, or maybe they've just developed a relationship with someone that's who they wanna see. So those calendars can be created in a couple of different ways. So that's a little bit about appointments. 
another note on that too, as I started with the virtual queuing and appointments, I think another advantage of these um, features being in the same tool is that they're also integrated in the same single pane of glass. So in your staff interface with QList, you'll be able to see all of those different student visit types, whether they're a scheduled appointment or a walk-in, your staff is not going to have to toggle back and forth between calendar and the QList staff interface. Everybody is lined up together with some differentiating symbols that will tell you who's an appointment and who is a walk-in. Data, as she said, data is it's kind of king, as we all know, right? So data visualization and student surveys. So let me talk about that a little bit. We always like to say the kind of data that respects privacy. So first thing is helping you understand student behavior. So some of the analytics that you'll be able to track with QList give you an understanding of how many students are coming in, what kind of services are they seeking, how long do those visits take, who was the resource that helped that student, and much, much more. So that's part of some of the data you can expect. But certainly one of the outcomes we hope is to help you better manage your resources effectively by knowing what the data says. So we're gonna give you reporting around your trends of service wait times and queue lengths so that you know, you know hours of day and days of week, when do we have these long wait times? Um, you know, painful, too many people waiting in queues, what can we do? How do we adjust our resource availability and schedules? Um, so it gives you the data on student services. You can allocate staff and resources to the right location at the right time. Tracking progress. So to see if students are coming back on a regular basis or if your services are helping students solve their own problems. One of the things that I hear oftentimes about some of the reporting that colleges get from QList is they can identify maybe a particular reason that students are coming in. Um, something may be very simplified, maybe for an IT help desk, it could be a password reset. They see these numbers going up and they start to develop a way for students to self-serve. So that's another outcome. Again, just looking at data and being able to have those conversations to develop new processes and make them all better. Student feedback, this is one of my favorite things to talk about. Um, it's SMS surveys and I'll talk more about it too. And I think the next slide or a couple more, but. This is another opportunity for you to engage with students even further is to ask them how they feel about the service that they just received. So the SMS surveys is a text message that we send out post visit. So as soon as they finish interacting with someone on staff, they get another text message from QList that says, how was your feedback? And that can be about, you know, the service that they received, you know, did you get your issue resolved? It could be questions about queuing. Did you like what you used today, QList? Did you like being able to wait where you wanted and schedule your own appointment, et cetera? So student feedback is certainly part of the data visualization that you'll be able to access. More about QList. So this kind of brings it all together um, in, in one nice little slide here. So virtual queuing, appointment scheduling, data visualiz visualization, all in one platform. So I'm just gonna kind of hit some of these bullet points to summarize, if you will. So again, I already mentioned this, that we integrate walk-ins and appointments in the same place. But what I didn't mention is this, and this is really key, is because we're built with that AI that I mentioned, it's really intuitive. So if a student does leave a queue or cancel an appointment, we will auto fill those slots, right? The solution will open back up, making room for someone else who's trying to also be seen. We're cloud-based. So keep that in mind. So 100% in the cloud hosted on Amazon Web Services. So making it easy to access from anywhere, anytime. But also typically your IT, IT resources are, are pretty excited to hear that um, because it's very, very little IT resource required to not only get it off the ground, but also to maintain it over time. I think an additional benefit of any cloud-based software that you all may be using or considering using QList is that you always have the latest and greatest platform of a queuing solution because we continue to enhance our features, add new features, and roll those out to our existing client base. Privacy and security, this is a big one, and we go through this with every college that we end up partnering with, with is going through their security team. So please know that we're FERPA compliant. Um, we do everything that we can to keep the student data secure. We never sell or distribute student information. Um, our platform keeps the data in safe hands of your employees. 
student feedback back to that SMS, excuse me, survey that I mentioned in the last slide. Just another point about that too, what I think colleges really like about it is that it's not a Qlist crafted survey. So you guys create your own through any third party, which may be Qualtrex or SurveyMonkey. It's up to you, it doesn't matter. But the nice thing is, is you get to ask the questions that are most relevant to you. What Qlist is doing is we're the vehicle of delivery because we're the ones already engaged with those students, getting them in to see you efficiently. So their final messages, you know, from advising, you may have a different question or a different uh, survey, excuse me, uh, than admissions or financial aid. Everybody sends their own based on where the student was. And those can be changed throughout a term. You just simply tell us what the new link is and we send it. But what colleges love about that feature is it's really proven to be the most guaranteed way to have a student give you that feedback is if you send it in a text message right when they finish interacting with someone on staff. So the data insight again, Qlist tracks a variety of different information about your cues. There are so many different data points giving you your average wait times, your service times, queue length, how many students are waiting at any given time, uh, return, how many are coming back, um, number of people seen in a day, why they were there, et cetera. We also have a new reporting tool called the Daily Scene that gives even a lot more additional robust information that really ties the resource to the student, which oftentimes colleges are looking for that as well. And then finally, I always like to make this clear, I did mention it earlier, but the optional hardware. So we know that not every student has access to this technology, so we offer optional hardware. So back to that kiosk, um, but again, it's not proprietary hardware, so it can be a tablet of any sort or use the QR code. Um, digital displays is what we mean when we talk about monitors. So if you wanted to have screens in your lobbies for students to be able to see the cues, what the wait times are, see themselves moving up in the line, um, that's all part of it. But we always want to create an equitable experience. And so that kind of brings everything together and summarizes Qlist, I, I hope. Um, and I really sincerely appreciate, again, you, Dr. Daniel. It was an exciting presentation. I'm thrilled to be able to share this experience with you today um, and grateful for having everybody else on the line. Would love to show you a presentation at some point and we can open it up to questions. Okay. I yes, see definitely. Something. Well, yeah, and now we have uh, come to the Q&A portion of our webinar today, like Kelly just said. Uh, where you can now send your questions in to Dr. Daniel and Kelly so they can answer your questions live on the air. Um, <clears throat> if you haven't already, you can send in all your questions by accessing the Q&A panel uh, that we have right here. It's located on the bottom right hand side of your screen. Uh, it's the option next to the chat button. And if you can't see it, there uh, should be three dots or an ellipses next to the chat button. Click on that and that should bring you to the Q&A panel. Uh, so, first off, we have a question that came in um, that looks like it's it's based on uh, or it's a question about user roles. And so they're asking, is it possible to prevent other departments uh, the, from interfering with, uh, you know, what other departments are doing in QList? Like, for example, uh, putting or removing clients from each other's line. Yes, and I'm going to give that to you, Dr. Daniel. It looks like you typed it out, but I'll let you go ahead and respond if you don't mind. I love, yeah, no, I love this question because um, the answer is yes. So I think that one of the things that we found is that people are, do like being beholding to their own lines, right, and to keep students in their own cues. And the other thing that we found is that sometimes students don't really know who they need to talk to. And so sometimes they end up in a queue that's actually not the right place. And it is very convenient to be able to move them then to another queue. So the way that QList is set up allows the institution and various, there's lots of granularity in terms of permissions. So short answer is absolutely long answer is 100%. You can give people exactly what you believe they need in terms of those um, permissions and ability to move people around or not. Um, so that we found that to be very useful and we use that a lot and it's trial and error as well. And the other thing that I love is that that's the kind of thing that we can fix immediately on campus as we find the need to do so. That's not the kind of thing that we have to submit a help desk ticket for. We can just go in and change permissions and either 
grant people the opportunity to move people around or take it away, depending on what the need may be. Great question. <laughs> Definitely awesome. Thank you. And this next one, um, I like this. I know a lot of our um, subscribers here at UB. Um, this is a question that a lot of them, uh, that's on a lot of their minds. You know, so if they uh, want to, uh, you know, get started with QLIS, how long does it take to get set up? I can take that one if you want. Um, so typical launch time is about four weeks. So we can be pretty speedy, um, especially I think when a lot of people think about implementing software, they think it could be months, uh, maybe sometimes even a year. QList is not that at all. It's a very quick process, like I said, three to four weeks. Um, and really the process is quite simplistic. We start by sending out a new client questionnaire and that gets dispersed among the departments that plan to go QList. So we can gather information about the student experience that they're looking to create. Um, we schedule a kickoff call. We go through that document line by line, make sure everybody's on the same page about what we're going to build and what those outcomes are going to look like. Um, we go through QA, testing, training, and then it's time for go live. Awesome. Perfect. Thank you. So it looks like the next question that just came in, this is a, a student privacy concern. Um, this person was asking, how is the kiosk view for students different from the mobile app view? Like, for example, are they able to see students' names on the queue in the kiosk? Oh, absolutely not, no. So from the kiosk, so let me differentiate the kiosk and the monitor. So if you were to have a, a digital display in your lobby, they would either see, most commonly, it's the last four digits of a student's cell phone number that's based on how they join. Um, if they are not using their phone, they're using their name, then it's first name, last initial, or QList could attach some unique identifier. So, you know, oftentimes we hear, you know, we don't really feel great about displaying a student's first name, last initial, if they're in the financial aid queue or something like that. So we can say there, this is the 10th, you know, your, your 10th or, or ticket number or something like that. And Dr. Daniel, I don't know if you're doing something like that at all. So actually what we've done is we had it up on the monitors for a little while. And I think two things, um, if I'm reading, well, I think the first thing is we don't have that displayed. Our thought was they're getting text messages that are telling them when it's time for them to come in. We didn't need the display monitors to then have it like the people waiting to get upgraded or flying standby at the airport, right? We didn't, we're busy, but we're not that busy. For institutions that are, you may find that useful. And again, you can decide what identifier you want to use. Um, I think the other question in here is how the kiosk view for students is different from the mobile app view. And the answer for us is that it's it's not. So what's really cool is the way that we have it built into the app and then also what they see on the on the kiosks around campus for them to, to make an appointment, it's the same. So because it is URL based, we just have that URL embedded into our app under the QList tile. Um, and then when they go to the kiosk on campus, it looks exactly the same, but we're not using the monitor feature, which is what would then list out the students. So staff see who's in line, other people do not see who's in line. But again, you may need to vary that depending on how busy your institution is. Yep, great question, great answer, thank you. Awesome. Perfect. Um, let's see another question. Uh, does does this require or does QList require any uh, additional software or hardware hardware? I should say, excuse me. Nope, nope, that's that's a big takeaway today is hardware is really becoming a lot more faded into this. This whole picture of QList. I mean, certainly you can have lobby kiosks. I think that that's still highly recommended. However, the QR codes have really done a great job substituting those as well. But most of the colleges I talked to today are using both. So they have a lobby kiosk in the lobby for people to access, or you can also have a QR code. But just remember, the lobby kiosk can be anything that you want it to be. Right, we literally had a couple of tablets that were no longer being used in our library. They were a little bit older and they run a website fine, but they weren't necessarily gonna like continue to make great updates. Right, or be able to be used to like download, I don't know, Office 32 or whatever's coming next. So what we did is we transitioned those because they're just, it's a touch screen tablet, right? So that QList is now accessible and we got a stand to put it on, right? And so these tablets, it was really, it, it, it enabled that cost for us was 
literally nothing. I mean, well, the stand cost something, but the, the computers were no longer, the tablets were no longer being used because they were aging out, but they run a website just fine, right? Take everything else off of them. It's URL based. It's not a big deal. You just keep them open to that page. Um, and we've had incredible success with students being able to access it in that way, but it did not require, and that's one of the things that was so important, as I mentioned before, our IT team doesn't have time to do this lift. We are a small institution um, with big dreams and bigger technological expectations that our IT team can handle. And so the fact that it's not on them to do this and that there were no integrations, and I cannot tell you how many meetings our, our chief technology officer or some of our other people for our student information system or for our SSO or any of those things came to a meeting. And they were, they'd been with Tara and they'd be like, no, one more time. No integrations. Be like, no, no, there's no integrations. And I'd get a phone call or a text message afterwards. Like Melinda, what, what integrations are going like, there's, there's no integrations. <laughs> I'm there's none. There's, there's none. Like it's, it actually lives on its own on a website. So once they heard that and signed off on, I'll tell you, this is the favorite thing that our IT team had, that I've helped implement since I've been here. Perfect. Glad to hear about that. Um, so this next and most likely be our uh, final question. It, it kind of, um, it goes off an earlier question about, you know, multiple departments, um, you know, being able to use this. And, and I know like based on that last answer, we know that they, can this does work across multiple departments um but i guess we can go to this next part of the question you know does does the system sync with the other departments sync in what way um so let me, let me answer it first because I, I think what the question is asking so each department and maybe dr you know daniel feel free to jump in too but each department kind of has its own life i mean they have their own student journey their own reporting uh their own text messages everything is kind of unique by department so in terms of syncing i'm not sure what you mean and the wait times of course vary by department the calendars appointment booking is all individualized for each and every department using QList. But if there's something more that I missed in that question, or maybe Dr. Daniel, you have a different impression of what that was asking. No, I think I think that you're right. That I think that the short answer is no, they don't sync. I want to the way that we think about it is that all of our students are trying to reach us and that each area has its own ladder by which they can climb up to come and see us. And so there may be similar similarities in terms of the appointment lengths or the fact that it's all integrating into Office 365 for us or whatever the case may be, but the admissions calendar doesn't link to the financial aid calendar and those cues don't overlap. So you build everybody their own bucket in much the same way. And, and we have a, 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 we are a one college model, right? And so we're all the same college, et cetera. That doesn't mean that all of our appointment types are the same. It doesn't mean that all of our needs are the same. It doesn't mean that the people who are serving our resources can do everything. So you get to get granular in that sense and delineate between, you know, we have um, front door success navigators that answer the phones that take care, you know, they know a little bit about everything. They've got a huge breadth, but not necessarily a ton of depth. Um, they can answer a lot of stuff, but only on the front lines, right? So then they are the people that can then send people to other areas and put them in other queues around the college as necessary. But one of our financial aid reps probably doesn't know the answer to other things so she may have he or she may have the ability to move people to other lines but not necessarily um, serve anybody with regards to those other areas if that helps with that answer right awesome perfect thank you that should be that was pretty comprehensive so thank you but now we are uh, at the top of the hour here and if if so if if there were any questions that we didn't get to today uh, that I'm sure that our partners and friends at uh, QLS will be willing to get back uh, to them individually after uh, today's webinar. And actually, as I uh, go through my closing slides in just a few moments, uh, please feel free uh, to continue submitting your questions if any come to mind, and we'll uh, get them uh, after the show. But first off, thank you again, Dr. Daniel and Kelly, uh, for your time here today. And of course, uh, thank you to QLIS. Um, and to you, our, our audience, I would also like to thank you for joining us today as well. Uh, for those of you who particularly enjoyed uh, what you saw today, uh, you'll be pleased to know there are many more upcoming web seminars like this one uh, that are provided by us at University Business. 
uh, which is the leader in editorial coverage of news, uh, trends, as well as current issues in higher ed. Uh, we have a wide range of readers who subscribe for free uh, to UB, and they stay up to date with us online uh, and through our newsletters, as well as uh, web seminars um, like this one. Also, uh, if you would like to watch uh, this web seminar today, or if there are any of you who believe um, that the solutions that were provided uh, would be helpful to your colleagues, uh, again, you'll be pleased to know uh, that our team at UB will be sending you an email at some point tomorrow uh, with an on-demand recording of this web seminar, as well as the link to the slides. So look out for that. Uh, and with that, on behalf of UB, uh, this is Stephen Blackburn. Thanks, everyone. Take care, be well, and stay safe. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. everybody. Bye-bye. Have a good day.